So currently our property portfolio is worth roughly 12 million quid, right? And we want to get to 100 million, but I'm in the game like 18 years now, and it's took me 18 years to get to 12 million. So if you do the numbers, I'm going to have to live to about, so 18 years to get to 12 million, that's like one and a half years per million. So it's going to take me 100 and whatever amount of years to get to the 100 million based on past performance. And I think the best indication of your future performance is your past performance. So I'm going to share with you how I plan to go from 12 million to 100 million and how I know that I can do it when my past performance would say otherwise. So when I started off in the property space, this is what I was doing. I would work my ass off to get the money for either a deposit or if I was buying the property outright for cash, I'd work to get the property outright for cash. And it'd take you a month, two months, whatever amount of time it took you to get the deposit or if you weren't getting the deposit and you're looking to get the full amount of money. So then when I had the money, I'd go and I'd look for a property and I'd buy a property and I'd pay the deposit and I'd go through the process of waiting to close the deal. And then when I closed the deal, I'd refurb the property and I'd rent it and then I'd start again. Okay, so I was doing that all the time. So the, the properties were going, like the deals were going, one and stopping, then another one and stop. Like carriages of a train. When one stopped, the next one started and they were all on the right track. So then I figured out, as I was getting a little bit more aggressive about this, I figured out that, well, hold on a minute. I, I knew I was going to earn 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month, whatever the amount of money that I was going to earn, I, I could kind of forecast it for two months or three months ahead. And when I knew a day was going to take me four months to close, but was going to take me three months to get the money up, well, then I knew then that, I could actually start looking for the deals before I had the money. So I would then go and look for a deal. I'd be putting offers on places and I knew that I didn't have the money at that exact moment in time. But I knew that the amount of time it was going to take to close the deal, that was going to have the money by then. So the mistake I made there for the first few years was I done them one after the other. I didn't have the mental capacity to manage two three four five deals at a time and i was always afraid of what if somebody found me out what if somebody found me out that i was making an offer on a property and i didn't have the money right i was concerned in the cases it was the wrong thing to do then i actually really learned what i was doing and i realized that pretty much everybody does that they have their line of finance they find a deal and they bring them in so after that then the waiting time between deals got shortened so i was able to go from one deal to another deal to another deal and i took a screenshot of an email that i got from whatever year it was a few years ago and it was a two-line email from my solicitor and or even a bit yeah two-line email from my solicitor and when i got that email i knew boom i'm gonna be a player in this game basically he said outfield is up next so I had, I had sent them in four deals that all had to go in a certain manner. And if they didn't work out in a certain manner, the whole thing was dead in the water. So we done one, we done two, and he's like, this one's up next. So I'm like, I'm buying properties by the week here. Wow, think of the amount of people that live their whole life just to buy one. And I'm doing it by the week. And it was a penny drop moment for me. So I knew at that moment that I was going to be I was gonna be a player in this game. And I'm still working towards becoming a player. But where if, if I was back there... Looking at where I am now, I'd say, yeah, I'm doing a good job. And maybe I am, but I'm, I want to push for, for more, right? So, hear, hear me out here. I went from doing one deal after another to sale agreeing two and three and four deals, um, knowing that I didn't have the money, but knowing that they would come in in certain sequences. And sometimes I knew that my sale agreed one deal and I was flipping it on and have it sold before I had to pay to the next one. And it became a juggling act. And it allowed me to gather a bit of momentum. After that then, People start following me like you guys are here now. So if anybody wants to share this video, it'd be greatly appreciated. I'll give you I'll give you a gift. I'll give you I'll give you some training for sharing it. And just let me know that you shared it. Um so um then people start following me. Actually, yeah, if you're into property, if you're into property, just write property in the comments here. Write property in the comments, share the video, and I'll give you a one hour property training session. There you go. All right. Um so People start watching me, people start asking questions, right? People started wanting to get involved in what I was doing. So when people are getting involved in what I was doing, they they were trying to get involved in what I was doing, but they didn't have the skills or the time or whatever else. 
So that's when people started being willing to lend me money, right? So what I done was a deal, a typical deal for me is worth 200 grand. I'm buying, you know, cheap houses in Dublin, uh, 200 grand. And my comfort blanket was I got 200 grand into the bank, okay? So I put 200 grand of my own money into the bank and I was actually about to buy a deal and then the money came in. Actually, I'm telling a lawyer there, let me flick back. I was buying a house to flip on. I was, buying a, I was buying a house to flip on and I got a short term loan from a lender. And when I got the short term loan for the lender, I didn't want to sell the property on, but I had to, to pay the loan back. And then I got an investor to come in and give me the money and I paid the short term lender back. And I'm like, whoa, now I can keep the property and I didn't have to flip it on and I still have the property now. So then I built up a bit of cash because of the next property that I was going to buy. And I had, the, and I had a little strategy that I used for, for, for buying properties. Thank you guys for, for sharing that video. Anybody that shares it, just write share it in the comment and uh, and write, and write property shared in the comment and I'll, I'll get you a, a business, a property training session free of charge as a thank you. Um, so where are we? I'm losing my train of thought here. My, my apologies, guys. So I had the money to close the deal, but I didn't want to close the deal with that money because I was out of game then. So I says, can I get more money from another investor? So I got money from an investor and I, I didn't know if this investor was going to give the money or not, but I thought he was. But I had the money in the bank to close the deal, so I wasn't gonna risk losing my reputation or anything like that if things went amiss, okay? So I kept the, the money in the bank and I used the investor's money. And then I was like, whoa, now I can go again. So I kept the money in the bank and I looked for another deal. And I had the money and then I found another investor and another investor and another investor. And all the time I kept the money in my own account so that if something ever fell, fell through very quickly, I wasn't snookered, my reputation wasn't on the line and I could close the deal. Now I'm at the point, actually guys, thanks a mil for sharing there. We can, let's, let's get this to 100. How many people are awake at this hour of the evening? I didn't even know if this was gonna be that interesting. Um, let's get this to 100, hit shared, write property shared in the comments and I'll give you a, a, a free property training session. That's the least I can do for you sharing my video. So now we're in a situation, right, where I'm keeping my money, right, but I've got so many deals going on that my little shitty 200 grand is not gonna get me out of trouble if something goes amiss, right? So then I had to go back to my new investor and say, look, this is the way it works because I can't take a chance in you saying you're gonna give me the money if you don't give it because I know these people. I don't buy from agents, I buy direct from people. So I can't let them down. So then I started tidying up my structures over here, right? So now we're in a situation, right? Where we've built this fund called Joe's Investment Bank or, or JIB for short. Joe's Investment Bank, and we've got one and a quarter million euros in this fund, right? That we've that we've uh, that we've got from individual people, and we pay these guys twelve and a half thousand euros per month out of this fund. Guys, we're at ninety. We're at ninety. Uh, we're at ninety people. Let's give us another share. Let's get it to a hundred. I haven't got a hundred live viewers on a video in a while, so I'll be actually happy if uh, if you can help me get that. That be that be a good buzz. Uh, so now we've got this fund, right? So what happens is. I pay the investors far more money than I would have to pay the bank, right? But the way it works is I ring them up and I'm like, hey man, do you want the, you're gonna do the deal yet? Will you give me the money on Wednesday? And he either does the transfer or rocks down to the office and we do the deal and I buy the house straight away. So I'm paying him far more, far more interest than I need to pay the bank. I'm just distracted by the number of loyal viewers here. We're at 96, 98. Yeah, go on, get it to 100, get it to 100. So. I'm at this point now where it's not all about the money. I don't mind that I'm paying far more money than I have to pay to these investors because they're giving me the money fast. So I'm talking to my, my seller. I'm like, listen, I'll have your money in two weeks. I'll have your money in a week. We're at 99 live viewers. Come on, get another one, get another one, get another one. So I'm sorry you got a big kid with this stuff. I should be focused on what I'm saying to you. So yes, 100, boom, savage, fair play guys, right? Well, we'll uh, anybody that shared this video, just uh, just write property shared in the comments and I will send you on uh, a free property training session. It's the least I can do, as I said. So now we're in a situation, right, where um, these guys are giving me the money fast, right? So why am I paying so much interest on the property? On the, on the property? Well, once the rent covers it, I'm happy enough to cover that, right? Once the rent covers, the interest, like I would basically give my investors all the profit on the property. 
because their money is only going to be in the deal for a year then they get their money back and then i own the house for whatever more and i get a 35 year mortgage on it and i'm absolutely killing it from there on in right now here's the trick right when the investors go to get their money back they actually don't want their money back okay they don't want their money back they're like joe i'm not making so much money with you don't don't let it end so i'm like okay no problem so what we do is we'll take your money and we'll bring it on to another deal thank you guys thank you thank you everybody for sharing i was actually gonna go to bed and i said let's just do a video for the crack and i'm actually delighted i've done it now um and as i said i'll give everybody that shares the video a property training session so the guys don't want the money back so i'm like right i'll find another deal so we go and we find another deal right so now we're in a situation right where we've got all these as in right now today we've got all these um all these investors right don't want their money back they're making so much money with me and they're like joe what happens if you drop dead what happens if you run off to las vegas and i showed them exactly how their money is secured in the exact same manner uh in the i showed them how their money is secured in the exact same manner that the banks secure the money when they lend me a mortgage it's the exact same right and they say well if i drop dead there's where your money is there's 150 grand of investors money in that property it's worth 220 that means 70 grand there to cover the cost of repossessing that property from me and getting it sold if i do a major mess up right and they take comfort in that right so they don't want the money back so now we're putting mortgage on the property and our interest rate is gone and i pay these guys one percent a month so if they give me 100 grand i pay them a thousand quid a month if they give me 50 grand I pay them 500 a month. So whatever they give me, I pay them 1% per month, right? And then I put the mortgage on it with the bank and my interest payment goes from 12% right down to 5%, right? Boom. So now, if I had a property that I bought for 150 grand, okay, give an example of one property there. Um, bought for 150 grand, it's rented for like 1,800 quid. I pay the investor 1,500. Then I've got my mortgage on it, so my repayment has gone from like... Um, 1500 down to 600 quid so now i'm quids in now i'm cash flowing every month on that property for 35 years or forever more because the mortgage is going to get paid off right so now we're in a situation right where we because we've been doing such a good job for for all my investors i'm kind of not even getting back to new investors and i'm just looking after my my um my existing guys because we've got so much money right or have you got so much money or have you got a lack of deals because the whole investment space right you either have loads of deals and you can't get money or you've got money and you can't get the deals so for everybody they believe they can access the deals but they can't get the money that's what they believe right currently now we're in a situation right where we've got eight hundred and fifty thousand euros coming back because we're getting mortgages drawn down and i either have to give that to my investors and say thanks for doing business or i have to find another deal but it's after taking me a good few years i actually made a video on this on youtube a few years ago and i was starting off it's not taking me a good few years to build this up to this point get to know and trust these investors they like me i like them we work well together right and now now i'm not giving the money back i have to go because i'm short of deals but the problem is the market's kind of stagnating so i have to go and find deals but here's the here's the magic part right my business has been going growing at a rate of like one deal a year or one deal every 18 months down to like now we're doing like two deals a month do you know what i'm saying Nah, that's that's wrong because we didn't do 24 deals last year so we're down to we're now doing say one deal a month but next year or this year going forward we now have the capacity to do two deals a month and then the following year we'll have the capacity to do three deals a month you know so we're putting the money in we're getting it all done we're getting an income we're getting the money out it's going back in it's going back out and all the time our property portfolio is growing and our rental income has grown and all the time the people who want to hate on me the reason for hating has grown as well because we're, we're doing a good job yeah but i'm only joking i shouldn't even be paying attention to them deals and guys i'll just say again if anybody wants to get a property training program from me just uh share this video we used to sell these programs for 100 quid i'll just give them to you um i just haven't got around to it. just write property shared and if you have your own business write business shared and i'll, I'll get you one as well I, I like to connect with business owners um I've, I've teach this to like loads and loads of people particularly to tradesmen and people who have their own business because they don't have a pension 
So I showed him a system how they can intertwine all this thing with their business. But this is the way we do it. So now we're in a situation, right, where, where um, if I play my cards right in the next six to nine months, right, if, we, if I play my cards right in the next six to nine months, I'm gonna like, I'm going up like a big level in like a short space of time. I'm pretty much like going to the next level. So every every little, uh, I'm actually a bit nervous about it. I'm a bit scared to be honest because this is the next jump. Do you know what I'm saying? This is the next jump and the next jump, cha-ching, 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 is the, is the big one, right? The next jump is the one where if we pull this off, we're players, you know? And I'm, I'm gonna say something here and I, 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 maybe I shouldn't say it, but you know what? I'm feeling generous, I'm gonna say it, right? So I've got two business, I've got my property business and I've got my business coaching business, right? Where I help tradesmen and self-employed people grow their business and basically, I, it's the easiest business in the world to do, right? Because I just show people how to do what I'm actually doing. It's simple, right? So uh, I'm a big believer in like the law of attraction and but you have to mix it with the law of taking action, right? But put it out there, have big targets, have big goals, right? So I've got my property business, obviously on this side, and Paddy pretty much runs that. He's a genius of a bloke, serious asset to have on the team. And I've got my business mentorship business here, and we do some flips and stuff like that in between, right? So I says, Paddy, listen, here's your target. You have to make a million quid this year, right? And he was like, he didn't even really pay attention to me, right? But I was like, he didn't even properly pay attention there, right? But I'm like, you have to make a million quid. Like, you know, people are working their whole life, right? To get this to thing to like a millionaire, right? And I'm like, Paddy, you have to make a million quid on that property stuff, right? And I'm going to make a million quid on this business, right? So that's the target. So I have to make a million, he's to make a million, right? A completely outrageous target. You know, and I'm, I'm not at that point where this came easy for me to even be able to do this, right? But I'm like, no. We're going to do it, right? So then I made a little video and I sent it. I tagged him in it in our private group. And I was like, are you familiar with that? Are you cool with that? Because he didn't say yes and he didn't say no. But here's the magic thing that happened. I promise you this, guys, right? I swear to God, right? I said that we need to make a million quid in property, right? In one year. A million quid cash in the bank in one year, right? By doing different types of deals and all that, right? The very first day back... Literally, the first day back, I wrote this on my Facebook page, I couldn't believe it. The first day back, I made 50 grand. 50 fucking grand on the first day, a complete corporal. Boom. Wasn't expecting it, right? We had another deal that was uh, that was supposed to close last year, and it didn't close last year, right? And it was the cra again, the craziest thing ever. Um, I got a phone call, right? Like, it's nearly 12 o'clock now, right? And when you do stuff that you shouldn't really do... Um, I think you get good luck from it. Now, I'm not talking about stuff, like, as in wrong stuff, but when you go over and above and you do more than what other people are willing to do, you'll generally get rewarded for it. So, I'm leaving the, op leaving the office, leaving the hospital with my brand spanking new baby. She's only out of wrapper like a day or so, right? And she's in the back of the car and I'm leaving the hospital and I'm driving the missus' car and the phone rings and I had the earpiece in and I took the call, right? You'll see where I'm going with this, right? This is me just putting stuff out there and it's it's coming towards us, right? And I took the call and an estate agent that I knew was on the phone and he said, hey, I've got a house you might be interested in because people know that when I say you're going to get your money, you're going to get your money and it's a beautiful position to be in. I said, listen, I'm driving home from the hospital with a brand new baby here. I'm going to be out of action for a bit and he says, to be honest, you should look at this. I was like, right, okay. No, I'm out again. And Linda says to me, get off the phone. Fuck's sake. If there's ever a time not to be on the phone, it's when you're bringing your brand new baby home. You know, yeah, be safe. So I was like, great. So then I'm at home, walking around the house with flip-flops and shorts for the next four or five days, right? Because I'm on daddy duty now, right? This is all crazy stuff, right? So I'm at the laptop, I'm like, let me check that property. It's going for auction, right? So I jumped on, I jumped on to, uh, to the website that was going for auction. And they, they didn't ask for like five grand deposit around. They just said it's 50 quid to register. So I'm like, 50 quid, I'll register. So I registered. And then I'm like, I'm not to spending 50 quid. I may as well look at the thing. So I went in, put the bid on the property, right? Today, my solicitor emailed me, right? So we bought that. We actually bought the property. My, day, my baby was born like a week or so before she should have been born. And the auction took place on the day 
that she was supposed to be born, right? And I have her on my lap when I let her press the button to do the bid and all that. It was brilliant. It was a beautiful experience for me to do, right? And today, the contracts came in that we've sold that property and made us flat 100 grand on it, right? So day one of the year back, we made 50 grand on the deal straight away. I'm like, whoa, Jesus. I, I, go back on my page and see it. I'm like, I'm going for a... I had the, I had the jitters after because it just came out an hour. I was like, I had the jitters. I have to just go. I have to go and I went out for a run and I came back and I was grand, right? So we done that one. Uh, 50 Gs, 100 Gs on the other one. Um, now, none of, I don't have the cash in the bank on either of these, right? And then on the third one, right? And he's actually watching this video now, right? Um, I've got a really good tenant in a property, right? That I bought a few years ago and I've been itching to sell the property. But because he's such a good tenant, and because he's just a sound fella, I wouldn't sell the property right and have him having nowhere to go and i asked him do you want to move somewhere else i got a few nice houses no no we're happy where we are he rings me then the other day didn't get back to him he rings me again next day i didn't get back to him so she's a better get back to this fella so we take i takes the phone call and he's actually watching this video right now so you know who you are right so the phone call started with a bit of news for you it's bad news for you and good news for me so he's the tenant says to me it's bad news for you and good news for me so it's bad news for joe good news for him i'm like what is it? I'm, like, I'm after getting the council house. I'm like, yes, lovely. So I've been trying to sell that house, right? I bought that house and I can sell it now. I'm not going to give the numbers on it because it's too good, right? Basically, I can sell that house for like twice what I paid for now. More probably, right? So I'm in a situation now where we're basically on, it's not even the middle of, of the first month of the year and we're 300 grand up on a million quid target. I'm like... Fuck, I should have set a bigger target. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's like, this is doable. This is completely doable. So I'm saying to Paddy, Paddy, you're 30% complete on your target and you're only halfway through the month. What have you got in store? What have you got in store? So it's just all these things are working towards us. But it's like, it's like for years we've been slogging and slogging and slogging and slogging. And guys, just for the new people coming in there, if anybody, if, if you want to share this video and then write in the comments, property shared, I'll give you a property training uh, program. Or if you want to write in the comments, business shared so that you have your own business, I'll still give you a property training program, but I like to connect with people who have their own business, you know? So we're in a situation now where we've been walking hard behind the scenes for years, right? And you know you know the story, I nearly hit the wall a few years ago, almost went bankrupt, right? But it's like, you know, it's Game of Thrones and they've, uh, they've got the, the thing out and they're like, you go here, 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 all these different things. They're moving around the armies. Well, for us, it's like we've been moving all these pieces around for, for years. So we've got the knowledge, we've got access to, we've got the manpower to manage the rentals. We've got access to the finance. We just need to get out and find the deals. And this is the, like, the key thing now. If we just, if we just do, if we just do this time around what we've managed to do every single time, we are now players. That's right. We're, we're going to be at the races, you know. We're going to be at the races if we manage to do this, you know. New people who don't have the money or can't get a loan to start. What does that mean? Now, bear in mind, guys, I'm at the time there where, where, you know, we were going from doing one year, a, day, a year, one deal a year, one year, one deal a year or to one deal every 18 months. That's where we're starting off. And as you keep going, you're getting more, the deal frequency it's getting faster and faster and faster and faster, you know. And the beautiful thing is, I'm able to now offer this expertise to my clients and the people who I deal with. So I deal with, like I help. So before I was doing the property stuff, I was running my building company. And in the building company, we were doing all right. You know, we weren't doing as good as we're doing now. We were doing better than most builders do. But it wasn't, we weren't knocking it out of the park. And now I'm... I'm actually very lucky that i'm able to reach back to all these builders and we've got like about 250 clients all over the country that we help i'm able to reach out back to these plumbers painters carpenters mechanics builders you name it anybody that works with their hands right i'm able to reach back to these guys and say don't do that do this don't do that do this right and the guys are doing it right and now our plan is my plan for 2021 this year is to get 100 tradesmen and 100 self-employed people right actually if you want to get involved in this write 100 in the comments when you hear this my plan is to get 100 self-employed people 100 tradesmen 
to get their first 100,000 euros in the bank, right? And, we, and, and do it this year, right? So I want to get 100 people to their first 100,000 euros in the bank. If you want to be a part of that, just write 100 in the comments there, right? And I'll explain to you about it. So what we'll be doing there is by Christmas Day 2021, I want to make sure that 100 people have 100,000 euros in their bank account for their first time ever, right? And why are we doing that? Because when they've got the money then, they can go out and they can buy a rental property and then ultimately we can work towards getting them to the point where they have four rental properties each. Because if they have four rental properties each, that means then that they can collect four rent checks per month and each one of those rent checks, excuse me, each one of those rent checks would be a week's wages. And like, bear in mind, a lot a lot of the uh, tradesmen, in fact, I'd say nearly every one of them, like, don't have a pension. They don't have anything to back them up. I talk to lads, oh, I'm out of action, this guy, and they're not making money. So you can't be doing that. So you have to go and you have to create another source of income. And you have to create a source of income that you don't need to be working for. And it has to be separate from the building, right? Now, there's a lot of people out there that would have all sorts of views on the rental market. You shouldn't be, you know, there's all, there's all crazy people out there that think I'm an evil man because I'm a landlord, right? But here's the truth. There's like 80 people living in houses tonight that if I sold a house tomorrow, it would be bought by someone who's going to live in it, not rental, right? So there's people have homes now that we're homeless and wouldn't have had them only for me, right? The problem the, well, they wouldn't have had those homes, but they, you know, they, they may be still homeless, right? The problem with the rental market at the moment, right, is that there's n there's not enough houses out there to cover the supply for the rental market. There's enough houses getting bought and sold on the private home market. That's fine. It's all in the rental end. So the only way that we can fix this is by getting more landlords into the market and more investors in, right? Now, here's what's going to happen. As the investors come in, the, the supply is going to increase and the demand will drop and the rents will drop. But you know what? I'm willing, I'm willing to deal with that, right? Because it's, it's a bit too much one way at the minute, right? So we need to bring back... And that, Joe Doyle is the man. Good man, Joe Cody. Appreciate that. Um, so at the minute there there's just not enough supply so we need to increase the supply so my plan is teach people show people demonstrate to people how i got my first 100 grand show them how to do it watch them doing it get them to that point get the 100 grand buy a property simple as that one more rent property on the market one more feather in your hat now you do that three more times and then you clear the mortgage in your family home you're sorted it's as simple as that you know and the thing is it's not that hard to do. You just need to have a plan. So I know I'm repeating myself here. I was going to say something else there because um, we're getting good numbers on this and I appreciate that. But you should all be in bed. Or does this mean now that I need to do live videos at, at, at midnight every night now because there's so many people on? If you share this video, write in the comments, shared and property if you want me to get your property training program. And if you have your own business, write in the, write in the program, shared, write in the comments, shared and business and we connect with you. Do you focus only on residential or you do commercial like apartments? Well, apartments is residential. They're not commercial. Um, I don't do apartments and I don't do commercial. I done one commercial and they nearly killed me. And what I buy is a three-bedroom house with a front garden and a back garden. Simple as that. Like, I was on a podcast there the other day and the guys were asking me questions about all sorts of complex stuff, right? I'm like, listen, lads. If you're looking, this is what I said to them, and I think I kind of disappointed them. I was like, lads, if you're looking for some kind of crazy, mad, complex thing, you're talking to the wrong man. Here's how it works. I go and buy a three-bedroom house, I'll possibly buy a two-bed, but a three-bed house with a front garden and a back garden. And I go and pay my investors 1% per month, which means if I'm buying that house for 150 grand, I need to be able to get 1500 for it because that's what I have to pay the investors. And then when I remortgage it, my repayment goes, I'm not paying the investor, I'm now paying the bank and my repayment has gone from 1500 down to 600 quid. That is as fucking simple and as complicated as it gets. What about interest rates? What about Corona? What about Trump? What about RT? What? Yeah, what about it? Right? Am I... Uh, 
Am I completely oblivious to stuff that's going on? Well, if I am, leave me oblivious because you know what? As far as I'm concerned, no matter what's going on in the world, I think people will not stop living in houses anytime soon. I think given the option, people would live in a house over an apartment. But I just keep it very, very simple, you know? And again, I see people, do you do any overseas stuff? Listen, I barely move out Clondalkin and I can make millions. Why do I want to go anywhere? So I hear people saying, you need to travel here and there. Maybe you do. But for me, I barely move out Clondalkin. My office is like 1.9 kilometers from my house. Most of my houses, you see this five kilometer limit? I could get to most of my houses without going out, outside my five kilometer limit. The only time where I'd be tempted to go outside my five kilometer limit is when I'm not walking and I want to go for a run. You know, simple as that. Someone's had to ask in there, was it? Would it not be faster to grow if you had apartments because of the amount of units all in one place? I don't like apartments. I'll tell you why I don't like apartments, right? Because you don't get 12 months rent, you get 12 months rent less the management cost, which is a month rent or two months rent. And I just don't like that. And I like to have it dotted around. When you go into a housing estate where there's a lot of rental properties, you can see there's a lot of rental properties. I would rather have, <coughs> I would rather have my houses in a council estate where the people either own the house or their council tenants than have them in private rented, in, than have my house in an estate where there's loads of private rented houses. You can see, when I drive down the road, that's rented, that's rented, that's rented. You can normally tell by the bleeding curtains and the paint on the outside of the house. Fascia does be rough on a lot of renters. It's just generally speaking, that's what it is. Um, houses that have better curtains are generally privately owned. Houses that have good exterior paint outside and the gutters and fascia maintained are usually private owned simple as that you know um so i don't like i have a couple of apartments all right but i don't i don't want to uh i don't want to get any more give me a front garden and a back garden and a three bed house and i'm a happy camper you know so guys listen i'm gonna wrap it up there with you thanks very much um for being here this evening thanks a minute for everybody that shared this video if you want to share it um if you haven't shared i've said oh, i've said this a few times now if you want to share it um and just write in the comments shared and either property or business. Either way, I'll give you a, a property training program. And, uh, you know, maybe you can learn something from it. May, maybe, maybe we'd be, you better not bid against me on a house at any time soon. If I'm, you know, be friends with me here. Yeah, we need to, we need to cooperate there. Never compete. Never compete. Always dominate. That's the thing, you know. So, uh, feels a shame now to, to go out with so many people on the live stream. But I better go to bed. Um, I promised myself that I was going to be, uh, in bed asleep for 11 o'clock every night over the last one look we'll, i'll share another story with you i'm i'm quite disciplined yeah um because i can only do what i'm doing if i'm disciplined right and rather than focus on where you are disciplined it's a good thing to actually say where you're not disciplined and an area for me was that i kept staying up late and then i was late getting out of bed you know and uh i says right i'm gonna make sure i'm in bed every day asleep for 11 o'clock, you know, but I had to do a little job here this evening on the laptop. So basically I'm in my sitting room, That's this is my spare sitting room, it's converted into a, a home office and uh, I'm sitting here getting a job done and then I'm, I finished about whatever, 11 o'clock. I was like, right, will I do something else? I want to go to bed. I was like, you know what to do, just jump on there and share the video. And really what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a good video because I'm playing around with this Instagram Reels and I want to just make it a reel. So I'm going to go over to a reel. Oh, actually, sorry, another thing there that I said at the start as well. Um, because I'm, made, I'm helping 100 people get to their first 100 grand this year, if you want to get info on that, just press 100 and share them. We we'll connect with you all tomorrow. But now what I need to do is I need to go onto my Instagram page and make a reel, which, a reel, which takes like 30 seconds, and say, if you want to find out how I went from 12 million, I went from zero to 12 million, I'm planning to go from from 12 to 100 go over onto my page so this is um, the mind is uh the mind is going overdrive but listen folks it's a pleasure bit what did you do what did you do to back yourself this time around i don't know what did you do to back up yourself this time around and not get stung like 2008 great question brilliant question in 2008 i was buying properties based on the value they were going to be at a later point in time and i was leveraged too high and I was personally liable for all the properties that I was buying. So nowadays I can buy my properties, I can get my mortgages in a company 
that I'm not personally liable for, but the disadvantage of that is that I can't borrow as much money, but that just makes me be a bit more clever on the far end and a bit more hard working so that I don't borrow as much money. So it's uh, it's better, it's less liability and it's not gonna happen because as you know, we almost hit the wall in 2008. Scary time, go on, go on, uh, go on, go on to YouTube and just Google uh, Joe Doyle bankruptcy or something like that and it'll, uh, it'll come up there, the whole RT documentary of, uh, of, of what was happening um, great to have the documentary now to look back was eight years ago or nine years ago because my my banking issues didn't start in 2000 but they started in 2008 but they didn't come to my head till like 13 or something like that so i think i'm like five years back on the horse now at this stage and uh oh my god I'm, I'm 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 giving a good go at it you know guys i'm off thank you very much for being here see you at the top